My name is Cindy Wasif, and I am a fellow of the New Age Skin Research Foundation. I am here today with Dr. Joshua Fox, founder and medical director of Advanced Dermatology PC, as well as president of the New Age Skin Research Foundation. Dr. Fox is a leading authority in the field of dermatology and an official spokesperson for the American Academy of Dermatology, as well as a former board member for the National Rosacea Foundation. Thank you very much for being with us, Dr. Fox. Thank you, Cindy, for inviting me. Today we will be discussing rosacea, a condition that affects over 14 million Americans. Dr. Fox, what exactly is rosacea? First of all, I, Cindy, I think it's so important that we're highlighting this very prevalent condition. Rosacea is a chronic inflammatory disease that tends to affect people generally between ages 35 to 50. And it's often with papules, pustules, and, and diffuse redness of the face. It can affect the eyes. It's mostly on the mid-facial area. What exactly causes rosacea, Dr. Fox? While there is no known cause, there have been many theories. One of the theories is that it was caused by microorganisms, whether uh, helicobacter, or whether it's caused by a Demodex folliculorum. These are mostly have fallen into disfavor, and they're not thought to be the cause now. However, there are cases where people have had these, and they've treated these microorganisms, and it has improved. And perhaps in some way they are responsible. Some other people think it's a de degenerative collagen disease or vascular disease. Clearly, the vessels are much more um, affected by minor stimuli, as many of the cases occur in women as they're approaching the, um, the, the perimenopausal area. So there, there seems to be many, many factors associated with it, and there are many other theories. However, these are, the, these are some of the more common theories. Dr. Fox, friends of mine with rosacea complain about their rosacea being triggered by certain things. What are some known trigger factors for rosacea? There are many precipitating factors. However, the factors vary between patient to patient. Uh, the National Rosacea Foundation has an excellent um, patient handout on common precipitating factors. Some of the more common ones include certain foods, like spicy foods, or a lot of times things with tomato sauce in many patients. In certain, in certain patients, foods with nitrates, like salamis, in certain patients, foods with acidity, uh, stress is a common factor. Other common precipitants, Cindy, include alcohol, change in weather, emotional ability, that can also sometimes precipitate it for many patients. Who gets rosacea? Are you predisposed if you're a certain age or nationality? As we stated before, rosacea is a very common disease with over 14 million Americans having it although most don't realize they have it. It can occur in any ethnicity. However, it is much more common of those with fair skin. It tends to occur between the ages of 30 to 60. Women get it twice as common as men. However, the disease is worse, oftentimes, in the men. What are some of the signs and symptoms that a person may have rosacea? First, let's define what it means by sign and symptom. A sign is something that a doctor notices. A symptom is something that the patient notices. So therefore, the signs the doctor notices is a papule, which is like a little uh, pimple, which may be filled with pus, uh, a, uh, a pustule, which is uh, rather pustules filled with pus, uh, red, red, red blood vessels that are coursing through the skin, diffuse erythema, they may develop eye symptoms, uh, keratitis. And these are the, some of the things that, that a, a doctor, whether it be a dermatologist or an ophthalmologist, may notice. Now the symptoms are those which the patient feels. The patient may feel flushing and warmth. Uh, they may feel um, burning, itching, a pulling on the skin, but they may even find it painful. In fact, migraines are two to three times more common in patients with rosacea, and ocular keratitis can even rarely cause blindness. So there are some rare symptoms that can have pretty severe effects. 
another common rare effect that people can get is the rhinophyma, the enlarged nose. How long does rosacea last? And it can, can it be prevented altogether? Rosacea is a long-term disease, and it can last till persons in their mid-60s. Although there are even cases, rarely, where it can even last longer. Can it be prevented? We have no known way to prevent the disease. However, as we discussed previously, there are certain precipitating factors, and therefore we should try to avoid those precipitating factors. For example, sunscreen may lessen the effect of the sun. Uh, people that are stressed, they should try to be more calm. If going into from cold to hot or hot to cold affects the person, they should try to make it a more gradual change. It's also important, Cindy, to be gentle with your skin as if you're overly harsh with, with, with your skin, it may also promote or precipitate another episode. Is there a cure for rosacea or at least a treatment to control it day to day? Fortunately, Cindy, there are many excellent new therapies, many of them just around 10 years old. These include topical antibiotics, oral antibiotics, topical retinoids, oral retinoids like Accutane, 13 cis retinoic acid, imidazoles such as Nizarel cream, and as well as uh, azelaic acid and, and uh, metronidazole, topical metronidazole. So there's many new therapies. However, some of the old therapies, such as uh, sodium sulf sulfacetamide and precipitated sulfur and salicylic acid, are often helpful in, help in treatment of this condition. Patients sometimes try to treat their own rosacea and end up exacerbating it. What do patients do wrong? I think the first mistake is that many patients view this as their being, that this is part of them, and that therefore they don't need to seek treatment or shouldn't seek treatment for it, that it may be considered cosmetic. Every insurance company in the United States considers this to be a medical problem, which deserves medical therapy. And most medical therapies are very, very effective, from the topical antibiotics to all the creams that I mentioned previously. And therefore, we can treat them and be very successful most of the time and only require laser in those patients who are resistant to the more simple therapies. So therefore, the first and most important point is that they should seek care from an appropriate dermatologist who is familiar with this condition and if necessary, from a dermatologic laser surgeon who's capable of treating some of the resistant sequelae of this disease, our condition. How exactly can lasers help rosacea patients? This is a very important point that you're making. Lasers can help different aspects of the rosacea. The different aspects that the lasers can help is the vascular component, the redness of the face, the broken blood vessels, and some of the papules. That's the lasers that help that part of the disease. However, a patient with a large, thickened nose, there's different lasers that we have to help the rhinophyminous component. We're able to layer the nose back to normal. As you said earlier, Dr. Fox, rosacea sometimes pre presents with red papules, and patients sometimes confuse this for ac with acne. What's the real difference between rosacea and acne? That's a good question. They are really two completely different diseases. However, they do share some common threads, such as papules, pustules. However, acne tends to have comedones, which we do not find in rosacea. And there are many other differences which are really beyond the scope of this discussion. Thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Fox. Thank you so much for asking me, and thank you so much for all your hard work on helping the many patients with rosacea.